click here to subscribe our channel and do not forget to press the bell icon to get regular updates of our videos. Hello friends, good evening to all of you. I am back with another video on sociology optional subject for UPSC CSC mains examination. In this video, we are seeing the perspective of Louis Dumin on the study of caste system. So friend, please do these shares. It will really motivate me to continue this awesome course. Share as much as possible so that more and more people will get benefited. Comment and like the video and ask any doubt if you have. And now you can also follow us on every page that is facebook.com slash unorthodox academy. So friend, as you know that we are covering slot 3 that is stratification cast and class and in paper 1 we have already finished the topic that is stratification mobility and paper 2 we are covering the topic caste systems and its first subtopic that is perspective on the study of caste systems. We have completed the perspective of G.S. Gurre and M.N. Shinivas. In this video we are going to cover the perspective of Louis Duman. So basically Louis Duman is the French sociologist and he is basically famous for his comparative study between the two contrasts. And basically he was an Indologist but he used a structural approach. So what does the term Indologist mean? So basically Indologist means understanding the Indian society with the text available for the understanding of Indian caste systems and he used a structural approach. Basically structural approach focuses on the thought process which is influenced by the social experience. So basically he also tried to understand the caste systems in terms of ideology associated with the caste system. So why there is a need of ideology? So basically he is a disciple of Claudie Lewis Strauss and Strauss as an study social phenomena particularly in the context of simple small scale societies. That means understanding the whole society with a considering a small scale society and in this we are basically going to, to see the society and experiencing the conditions by living in the society and understanding its phenomena and that's why Levis Strauss approach is also called a structuralist approach and a structural approach of Strauss basically influenced by the Vienna school of linguistic and Emile Durkheim. So Durkheim basically in his study of religion pointed out that there is a correspondence within, between the thought categories and social experience. So Tao categories are a product of social experience as you know that and duality of social experience give the rise to dualistic uh, expression of sacred and profane. That means every perspective that we see which always have a dualist expression that means it is sacred as well as something in the society that is profane too. So he goes on to say that we can understand social reality by analyzing a structure of ideas in terms of binary oppositions. So as you know that uh, when we see the term binary that means two. So in this some one thing is positive and another thing is negative. So basically in terms of these binary oppositions we can develop models in terms of which empirically observable regularities can be explained. For example, food, it's one perspective or expression is raw, another expression is there's, it is quick, cooked. So binary, so this means the binary opposites. So that's why they looked ideology as a basis of understanding sociology. So why we needed the ideology? The answer is here, that is, it is the basis for understanding sociology and this would be here analyzed in terms of the binary opposition. So for in context of the Indian society, Duman say that we should look at the distinctive ideology that exists in Hindu caste system. So he does not look at caste but he look caste as a system. So then he in his book Homo Hierarchies, he developed his theory of caste systems in terms of structuralist approach. So his approach is also Indological because he uses scriptures or the text available with respect to the society. So applying that he says that what is unique about caste system is the ideological principle of purity and pollution that means binary opposites and they constitute binary opposites. So what is pure in repelled by impure and vice versa that means impure is repelled by pure. So this is under the underlying principle of hierarchy. So the important term is that it is in principle for hierarchy and here he refers to the work of Celestian 
बूगल ऑन द कार सिस्टम सो नाउ वी सी वॉट सेलेस्टियन बूगल कैरेक्टराइज अबाउट द कार सिस्टम सो बेसिकली बूगल हैड आइडेंटिफाइड थ्री फंडामेंटल कैरेक्टर्स ऑफ कार सिस्टम द फर्स्ट वन इज सेपरेशन सो इन मैटर ऑफ मैरिज एक्सचेंज ऑफ फूड एंड फिजिकल कॉन्टैक्ट इन द इंडियन सोसाइटी देन हेयर आर की रैंकिंग ऑफ ग्रुप एज सुपीरियर और इन्फीरियर टू ईच अदर देन देयर इज इंटर डिपेंडेंस बिटवीन द ऑक्यूपेशनल डिविजन ऑफ लेबर एंड दिस इज पॉपुलरली नोन एज जजमानी सिस्टम्स सो बेसिकली वाई दिस टर्म्स आर इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दे मेक्स द स्टेबिलिटी एंड ऑर्डर इन द सोसाइटी एंड इट विल ऑल्सो लीड टू द वर्टिकल मोबिलिटी एंड स्टेबिलिटी बिटवीन द सोसाइटी so dumen says that these all three exercises de described by buge are actually reducible to one fundamental propositions of pure and impure that means binary opposite so he says that these three can be reducible to this one fundamental proposition that is pure and impure so basically he said that in hindus every aspect of life is divided or classified on the basis of purity and pollution so those caste who have more pure traits are on the top of hierarchy whereas the most polluted on the bottom so there are two types of purities and pollution that is both have permanent and temporary aspects so for example if we consider permanent purity it means brahmins temporary purity means kshatriya temporary impurity or pollution means vaish and permanent pollution means shudra so basically in vedas there are three types of qualities now we see that these qualities or these are also known as gunas the first one is sattva means that means wisdom austerity truth etc whereas rajas means bravery luxury etc and tamas means darkness illiteracy and laziness so on these basis on or we can say the, on the basis of these guna, gunas the hierarchy is constructed and the brahmin has basically sattva qualities kshatri possesses both sattva and rajas vaishya has only rajas and tamas qualifies or tamas qualities and shudras contains the lowest quality of tamas so now among hindus everything of life is divided into purity and pollution for example gold is purest silver is purer and other are polluted so in same way silk is the purest and the others are also polluted so in diet when vegetarian are the basically purest non vegetarians basically who feed on fresh waters are the purer and non non vegetarians who feed on dead meat are the least purer for directions north and east facing is the purest but southward is polluted and for occupations the teaching is the purest form and the warfare of army is purer and service is polluted so those who those castes who had more pure traits than other will always be on the top of hierarchy where others are on down on the hierarchy so dumen further elaborates that hindu notions of purity and pollution according to him menstruating women don't enter kitchens that means they are not allowed inside temples also and because as long as the blood is inside the body it is pure but as blood comes out it becomes impure that's why they are not allowed in kitchens as well as in temple so it is believed that that women become impure during menstruations and thus not allowed and same in the case with bathing for example bathing is a purificatory rituals and then that is the most impure thing so people who bury dead bodies are considered to be impure and a brahmin is basically considered to be because pure because he is associated with those things which don't make him impure but at as a warver has to cut hair and separate nails hairs and nails were separated from body are considered polluting because they are now going outside the body so a barber belongs to a low caste so social superiority of hierarchy is basically based on this relative purity or impurity level so now when we consider caste system basically is a result or notions of purity and impurity and humans always says that also says that unlike western society there is a distinction between status and power in indian society in western society status is basically based on political and economic power but india kshatri is politically power vaish is economically powerful or basically kshatri is politically powerful vaish is economically powerful but still they are inferior to brahmins so here power is subordinated to the status based on pure purity which is the binary opposites 
which is are basically a part of binary opposites and mutual oppositions of pure and impure becomes primary conditions and a number of structures can be built for example savarn or and avarn and savarnas basically the four varnas avarnas are the panchamas that is dalit and there is also a mutual repulsion and segmentation which forms their basis of untouchability so within savarn also there are binary oppositions for example dwij versus non dwij even among dwijes brahmin and kshatriya because brahmin and kshatri both do dwij ceremony or upanishad sanskar so dumont also says that india is a special example where power came to be secularized that means power does not play much roles in rather early and in west and even in africa king had power over both state and religion so they used to say that king is divine but in india religious authority was the monopoly of the brahmins and the political power of kings was temporarily due to this variation so politics and religions were separable and thus politically political authority was secular so dumont believed that caste system is completely based on the ideology of purity and pollution hence it is a cultural particularistic phenomena now we see the criticism so basically as you know that this is a cultural view which is based on the in action ancient text that is mean indology and as you know that amen shrinivas always says that or basically rejected the textual view and and he also rejected the theory of gs gurre as well as of lumen because they are based on textual approach so gs gurre also criticized lumen dumen interpreting indian text for hidden colonial agenda so according to human him dumen tried to say that india indian has always been a non egalitarian and unequal community whereas western equal are equal and egalitarian now tn madan believed that merely pollution and purity is not the basis of hierarchy in caste system because except few brahmins all the brahmins are non vegetarian and whereas many vaishya castes are vegetarian but they are still brahmins but still brahmins rank top and vaishyas down the order so dumen ignored the political perspective which largely determines the hierarchy of caste system for example those castes who are politically power that means dominant caste are better ranked at one place but where they are not powerful they are ranked lower down the order so now we see the conclusion so basically caste is an old institution of india which has generated curiosity and controversy at the same time among intellectuals since the facts and figures related to the caste system is not very authentic that's why every perspective sounds incomplete and lack of acceptance dumen louis dumen view of caste is known as culture particularistic view and he identified the uniqueness of caste systems basically on the basis of purity and pollution now he has ignored other aspects of emergence and prevalence of caste systems but the way he identified and explained it it is considered as one as one of the most authentic view on the caste systems so edwin louis in his comment in south asian uh, south asian review uh, wrote that it is the most authentic view on caste system so thank you guys for listening and watching this video thank you